but I guess we should uh, shift onto the hot topic, which is a bit of a different one. Uh, this is to do with Marco Hiatala um, announced his resignation very suddenly from Nightwish, uh, what, a week or so ago now as, as we do this? Thereabouts, yeah. And the just the general, because the conversation behind the scenes for us on the show seemed to take a bent toward you know, streaming services and, and things like that and, and the impact they're having on artists being able to do their art and, and all that sort of stuff too. So we're just going to try and unpack the statement that he made a little bit because I think it's a bit too simplistic to point at one particular aspect. I think this is a lot of, we've been talking about it obviously, but we think it's a lot of things combined to make the decision that's been hard. But what are your sort of thoughts on the whole thing? Yeah, there's a lot to unpack here. Um, the, th- the thing is, is like, um, streaming not paying as well is definitely part of it, mm. but it's not the whole story, so to speak. You know, like it does sound like because he also talks about you know tour promoters squeezing squeezing the man as well, and it's like yeah. between that and you know label revenues being quite low, and the very fact that you know as he said he's he's fifty five, he's got family. Um, and doing that grind, touring grind, um, and writing, recording, touring, writing, recording, touring, writing, recording, touring is you know as he, you know had 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 a year to sit home and think about it, like we all had to, you know, decided yeah. that it was time to time to hang it up, yeah, and maybe do something else. Which I mean, to be fair, a lot of us had that thought. Um, over the past year, yeah, that you know, and we took it as a chance to reset and try something different. And you know, like I wish, I wish Marco all the best. Um, but um, it does sound like it does sound like he had a lot going on, and unfortunately, he decided um, it was time to step away. So you know, I wish him all the best. Mm. I think that lockdown, COVID has probably in a lot of respects, we're going to see the impact of this for a few years to come yet. Even once the vaccine's done in the next sort of 12, 24 months, we all start to get back to quote unquote normal and we'll do what they did in the twenties. We'll have a, a roaring twenties repeat and all that sort of shit. I'm sure of all those things, you know, history has a habit of repeating itself. Um, but I think we'll see the, because we're getting better understanding and appreciate mental health and the impact of that, I think we're going to see a lot more fallout from this lockdown or whatever. Like you look at the way that um, even in Victoria, like being down in Hillsville today, regional Victoria looks at mask wearing very differently than in CBD. Very, very differently. Oh, yeah. And that's not a bad thing. It's just an observation. If you're in Melbourne during lockdown, you have a different point of view on this whole bloody thing. But again, if you're in Italy or America or UK right now, your view is very different to ours down here in Melbourne again. And the... the the way that's going to be processed by each individual over the next few years and probably longer to come, because I think the the actual trauma has been underestimated for mine. So Man, I think that's part of it. I'm still finding myself going to the shops when there's no one there. Well, even like just just because it's like, mm, it's like what the fuck is all these people doing here? Yeah, <laughs> doesn't feel normal, does it? No, it doesn't. We went to Hillsville and there are certain parts of the of the zoo you're supposed to, you know, wear your mask in and stuff. And like I said, they're a bit more relaxed in, in regional league. And so not everyone was wearing a mask. And we were sitting there going, fuck this, we're putting on a mask. And it's just like, fuck. And the tension you feel when you're following the rules and doing the right thing and then someone doesn't now, it doesn't. I'm not trying to belittle or berate anyone in that context. It's just, it's, it's just interesting the psychological differences. Like from our end, everyone's carefree and la da and we're like, no, like, don't do that. Um, we don't trust it to be carefree and lighty da for us. Yeah. I mean, but again, everyone's point of view is very, very different on that. And that's okay too. But that's why I think that there's going to be a lot to play out in that regard. The impact of being locked down at home for an extended period of time and, lo- and for the arts losing their income on top of that, that's, that's huge. And so there's going to be a lot to, to go through in the next few years out of that. So I think that's a big part. Of I mean, it. I'm gonna. Yeah. 
I can't I can't imagine how after spending a year at home, mm. then going, all right, I'm going on the road for nine months. Well, how do you even like that's a, I could, that's a very daunting task. Yeah, I couldn't imagine being um, on the road and touring. You don't know what's got every country is different. I mean, you look at the, the, the political differences in Australia alone, from state to state. Yeah. And how it's being handled. And I mean, like, yeah. I, 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 I told a friend in Adelaide, like, I was, look, tentatively, like, I'd love to visit sometime around March. Mm. And as March gets closer, I'm just like, I'm really sorry, but I can't do it. Not feeling it, yeah. No, but just because I don't know what's going to happen in March. You don't trust that you'll be able to get back home. Exactly. Mm. And it's like... I'll, I'll, I'll wait until we're... And that's just within Australia. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I can't imagine... But even now, like, even if you look, like, say, for example, the States, how many people who are touring, be it sports people, entertainers yeah. or whatever, have COVID Jeez, or have had COVID? The Australian Open month. I mean, there was an NBA team that fielded, like, eight players out of 15 that's recently right. and, like... I think um, Fedor uh, mm. just announced he had it this morning. He's a legendary UFC heavyweight. Some NFL quarterbacks, like one team, I think it was the Denver Broncos, had to field a receiver at quarterback position. Which yeah. The NFL yeah. Like- so they're, they're, that, which means they got three quarterbacks and a probably all a training them. quarterback, and all of them got COVID. Yep. Or well, they were in COVID. And Dave bad. Chappelle announced that this morning. Mm. And it's like I can't imagine going. Yeah, so touring well, right now, forget it. It's just not. And especially, and I mean, sort of again, like you said, fifty-five years old, he's got a family, a uh, wife, some pets. And I, I can, I can, I can, I can totally understand going. You know what? Too hard. This is too much work for too little reward. Yep. And I don't blame him for that either. I think, like, like you said, I think just you know, wish him the best and hope that he you know comes back and. He doesn't just have a happy life with what you got left of it. Exactly. I mean, I mean, yeah, I, not, not wish you had a very good run. I, 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 I would, I, would yeah, love I to have this. Yeah, exactly. I think we all would. I don't think it's over for them. I think they'll find a way to carry on. Uh, they but they're a professional band. They'll, they'll do their thing. But at the same time, it's, it'll be interesting to see what they do next. But the only thing I wanted to touch on that was this: the the notion of you know touring. If you read the statement, there's references to touring, people wanting money from them, and merch companies, and and streaming services, and all those things absolutely have an impact. But what yeah. I think we're finding now is that the need for artists to be much more independent, where you don't need a record label anymore, is becoming more and more apparent because the the pie gets smaller, but there are still just as many many hands taking the slice. And the person who gets fucked at the end of that every single time is the artist. No, it, 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 it's, it's, it's the same. If you want to help musicians, it's the same as helping all working people. Mm. You know, you got to, you got to, at the end of the day, when you're a working person, you're making things <laughs> working, using, bra- using brains and muscle to create things. Yeah. And, and as a manager and a, a middleman yeah. taking pieces out of that pie. Yep. You know that's that's uh that's diminishing uh, your your income and your uh, the value of what you've produced. And yeah. it's the same for all working people. Mm-hmm. And if you want to help musicians, you got to help all working people. It's the same deal. You know, when yeah. you help one of us, you help all of us. It's a socioeconomic issue, not a. Not a Spotify or any streaming services. That yeah, bad. It's, it's a much larger, larger yeah. issue. It's, and it's, a system, it's a systemic issue. And you go back to COVID and COVID's highlighted that, especially in yeah. Victoria. Casualized work and all that sort of stuff was one of the reasons. For oh, that. yeah. So I think what we're seeing now is not so much streaming and that being the bad guy and that direct impact on the artist and their revenue because at the same time, you can still make money from your merch if you organize things correctly. And all sorts of stuff. So you can still make money to make a living. I think what we're seeing now is that the general social inequality in, in wealth diversity is what's coming to play. It's been exacerbated. Yeah. And now everyone's really getting to see it in real time. 
in their face in every aspect of their life because either they know someone has been affected by it or their favorite artists are being affected by it or so on and so forth. All that TV shows we like have stopped production. Movies have been delayed. Albums delayed. All, all the arts and stuff have been slowed down and, and everyone's income has ground to a halt. So depending on where you live and what sort of support you get from the government, of course. But I think that's what we're seeing more of than, than anything else. Then I would put it more into that. The, just the general socioeconomic impact of what COVID has laid bare for all to see. And then when you sit back and go, fuck this, <laughs> I don't blame anyone for thinking that. Yeah. I, just, I think that's a generalistic point of view. And I think this might be a bit of a different take from what the fans of Night Wish will think. And I think it's probably a different take to what a lot of us talking in the group chat were probably saying to each other at the time. But I think this, you and I are pretty much in agreement on, I think, why we should have just yeah. any one thing. And that the last 12 months or so have shown us exactly where society is at when it comes to value. Exactly. I mean, it's felt, I feel bad saying this, but like, not always you're at that level where this would happen. Yeah, because they're they're at the level where they're professional musicians. Like, they they're not they don't have day jobs. No, you know? but at the same time, they're probably not swimming in cash. You know what I mean? Like, yes, yeah. like I'm sure, but I'm sure Metallica are fine. Yes, they and would. I'm, you know, and and by the same time, you know, there are pro- there are plenty of bands who your favorite touring bands who are going back to day jobs. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, um, and those guys again have that day job to fall back on. Yeah, uh, hopefully. Uh, whereas Nightwish, you know, they they you know their eggs are in this basket, and once this came to a halt, then you know things are gonna get tough. Yeah. So again, wish him all the best, but uh, you know. It's unfortunate, but it is. Yeah. It's unfortunate. We'll see what happens because there's a lot of dire predictions about seeing a lot more of this in the future. And I wouldn't be surprised if we do because of, I gain, I think, the main reason. Again, yeah, it's a systemic problem. So we're, we're, well, we're, we're definitely going to see more of it. Yeah. Interesting, especially in an election year in Australia. Well, I mean, you got to remember, a dec- it was over a decade ago, Dave Lombardo quit Slate over virtually the exact same thing. Yeah. Yeah. And that was nasty the way that played out, too. That was nasty, but I mean, he claimed he was making sixty thousand dollars a year playing for Slayer. Yeah, which is fucking insane. <laughs> That's nuts. Like, there's no way. So, there is yeah. the amount of money that band generated to, to yeah. Um, yeah. Some very bad contracts have been negotiated along the way, and that's not going to help anyone either. Yeah, but I mean, look, Bob. But I mean. Hey, look, Dave's having the time of his life now playing for Mr. Bungle and the Misfits and all that. And all that. And man, hopefully Marco gets the same thing. So, yeah. No, and, we'll see. And if he goes into doing his solo albums, well, that's not a bad thing either because his solo album was a fucking ripper. So, exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. Good luck to him. Yeah. Anyway, we'll get on to some music, will we? Yep. Peace. 